Do you want this recorded? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, is it ready to record? Yes. <clears throat> uh, so, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Jia Yue. I'm a first year PhD student of Dr. Rob Matt from the University of Waterloo. And uh, my I did my undergrad at Jin University, and I did my master's and a PhD at the University of Waterloo. So today I will talk about the dynamic behavior of black hole transitions in the points. And this talk is based on the paper with Dr. Roman, Dynamic Behaviors of Black Hole Transitions in the Points, published on the paper JHEP. And um, so this is today's outline first. I will give you an introduction on the black hole thermodynamics and black hole chemistry. And then we will talk about the quadruple points in black hole field transitions and the dynamic process as the quadruple points. Then I will talk about the, third, the first passage events found at the So first introduction. Uh, you may think of the question, what are black holes? So here is a simple question to think. So how fast would you need to travel to escape the gravitational pull of the Earth? So anyone can answer this question? <laughs> <laughs> so Eleven point two kilometers per second. Yeah, correct. <laughs> if there's no correct. atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if you want to escape the Earth's gravity, you need to travel faster than eleven point two kilometers per second. So how about we have a uh, uh, more massive, a denser planet or stars, you may need a larger escape velocity, right? So here, in 1783, John Michel realized that gravity of star could be strong enough so that the escape velocity of the star may exceed the speed of light. So in this case, light cannot emit by the star, so we could not see this star. So he named it a dark star. So this is a dark star for Kodo. This is probably the origin of the black hole. So uh, in 1915, Albert Einstein proposed the theory of general relativity. General relativity is a theory that describes the relationship between the space-time geometry and the matter distribution. For example, in the Einstein field equation, your left-hand side is the uh, space-time curvature term, and uh, the left-hand side will be the matter distribution term. So, and uh, in, in the next year, in 1916, Carl Schwarzschild obtained the, an exact solution to the Einstein field equation. So that is uh, this metric. This is called the Schwarzschild metric. So where fr equals to one minus two m divided by r, m is the mass of the black hole, r is the radius. So if you look at this space-time metric, you'll find that this is a space-time region with a radius called the threshold radius, where r equals to 2m. So this is uh, what we now call the event horizon radius. So this is the point of no return. So uh, in this space-time region, it will have strong gravity that nothing can escape, not even light. So this is probably a, a rigorous description of the black hole. So and uh, the most exciting thing in the 21st century is that we verified the black hole can actually exist. For example, in 2002, um, physicists found that there exists a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. So, and um, on September uh, 14, 2015, the Nether Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, the LIGO collaboration, found that um, they, de de they detected the gravitational waves can be made from the merger of two massive black holes. So this is uh, evidence that black hole may exist. And uh, a, a more uh, direct evidence is the first image of the black hole. In 2019, the Event Horizon Telescope, uh, EHT collaboration took the first ever image of the black hole. 
This is the black hole which lies at the center of the M87 uh, galaxy. This is the first time we human have seen a black hole. And then later on, we also took pictures for the black holes living in the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way. So now let's talk about the black hole thermodynamics. So uh, in the 20, uh, in the uh, 1970s, John Wheeler asked a question: What would happen if you pour a cup of uh, a cup of hot coffee into the black hole? So what would happen? As we know, the coffee has entropy, and the black holes will swallow this hot coffee. So, but where does the entropy go? This is the question. And um, there is a student of Wiener uh, called uh, Jacob Bakerstein. He said, black holes must have entropy. Entropy will not vanish. So when black holes swallow this hot coffee, the mass will increase, and uh, the event horizon will expand outward. So the area of the event horizon will also increase. So this is kind of conjecture that the, the horizon area may be related to the black hole entropy. So from now on, we know black holes can have entropy. So the next question is, are black holes really black? So no, black holes can emit hot radiation. Also in 1970s, uh, this is the paper uh, by Hawking in 1973, uh, 1974, black hole exposures. So, and this is the second paper followed by this, called particle creation by black hole, also by Hawking. So these two papers show that the Hawking radiation, uh, the black hole can emit Hawking radiation. So this, here is a, an intuitive picture of the Hawking radiation. So um, uh, if you consider uh, the quantum field theory in time space time, you find that the quantum, uh, the abutting the space is not really empty. So there may be uh, virtual particles, virtual particle and particle pair, pop in and uh, uh, I mean, uh, create or an annihilate. So if a uh, virtual particle pair appears near the horizon, one of the particle may be swallowed by this black hole, and then the other particle will escape. So this is uh, in the intuitive. A picture to think of how the black holes can emit the Hawking particles. And if you have an observer as the infinity to detect the radiation spectra, you'll find that the Hawking radiation spectra has the same form as the thermal radiation. So it's just like the thermal radiation spectrum. So, uh, and uh, they call the corresponding temperature of that spectrum Hawking temperature. So, from now on, we know that black holes can have entropy, can have temperature. So, uh, and then later on, uh, the four laws of the black hole mechanics was established. And uh, the four laws of the black hole mechanics <coughs> is analogous to the, four, uh, the four, four laws of the thermodynamics. So here is the four laws of black hole mechanics uh, by Bardeen, Cutter, and Hawking. The, uh, the zero law is that the surface gravity of the black hole is constant over the event horizon for a stationary black hole. And uh, so this tells us uh, the surface gravity plays a role as a temperature. And uh, the first law is just like the first law of thermodynamics. In this case, in the black hole case, for a rotating black hole, for a rotating charged black hole with a mass m, and the momentum j and charge go, we have the variation of the mass equals to the surface gravity times the variation of the area of the event horizon plus the angular velocity times the variation of the angular momentum and the potential times the variation of the charge. So this is the first law of the uh, black hole mechanics. It's just like the first law of the thermodynamics. The second law is the Hawking area theorem, means that the area of the uh, black hole event horizon can never decrease. So it's just like the, the entropy will not creep, will not, uh, will not decrease. So the third law is, is it possible to reduce the surface gravity or temperature to zero in a finite number of steps. So this tells us the surface gravity can be interpreted as temperature, and uh, the mass can be interpreted as energy, and the area 
can be interpreted as the entropy. So the black hole thermodynamics has uh, been established since then. So now I will talk about the black hole chemistry. Let's go from the black hole thermodynamics to black hole chemistry. Uh, the next two slides are based on this paper. This is a review paper for the black hole chemistry. So as we know, um, here list uh, some uh, properties of the black holes. In the black hole thermodynamics, the mass M is interpreted as energy, and the surface gravity is interpreted as the temperature, and the, first, and the, the area is interpreted as the entropy. And uh, this is the first law of the black hole thermodynamics. It's the simplest case. The variation of the mass equals to temperature times the variation of the entropy. And uh, you, may, you may wonder this question. Uh, in, a, in a chemistry course, we know there is a pressure uh, volume. So can, can we introduce some pressure and volume in the black holes? Yes. Here, we interpret the cosmological constant as the pressure, P. So, and we also interpret the mass, M, as enthalpy instead of energy. So here, our mass, M, is uh, E plus PV. So we have the generalized law of the black hole uh, of the black hole thermodynamics called the black hole chemistry. So we have the pressure and the volume term. So here is a summary of the black hole chemistry. And the main idea of that is to identify the mass as enthalpy instead of energy, and also identify the cosmological constant and its conjugate variable as the pressure and the volume respectively. So in the black hole chemistry, mass is the enthalpy which is the energy to create the black hole plus the energy to place the black hole in the environment. And also the cosmic constant is pressure. If you have a positive lambda, we have cosmic tension. So this is, is just like the fluid that has negative pressure. So it's just like our expanding universe, the dissipation space. And if you have a negative cosmic constant, you have a positive pressure, and it's just like the anti dissipation space. So this means that the black hole can also have chemistry. And um, in the context of the black hole chemistry, we can uh, study some, some very interesting phenomena. For example, the black hole phase transition. And this is the simplest uh, black hole phase transition um, proposed by Hawking and Page. So this is the Hawking Page phase transition. So in, in this case, they consider a Schwarzschild ADS solution. So this is a Schwarzschild term. This is an ADS term where L is a cosmological constant. Uh, is related to cosmological constant, it's called the ADS length scale. And uh, using this metric, you can compute the thermodynamic quantities <coughs> for this uh, black hole. So you have the mass, the entropy, and the whole temperature, the pressure, which is related to the ADS length scale L, and the volume. So after getting the uh, thermodynamic quantities, we can we can introduce the Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy is that just uh, defined as the enthalpy minus the temperature times the entropy. So if you plot this Gibbs free energy versus the temperature delta, you will get this figure. And this figure will tell us there is a first order phase transition between the thermal radiation and the large black hole. So uh, as you can see, if you, uh, at this temperature range, you will find the large black hole has lower uh, Gibbs free energy, so it is the preferred state. But if you lower the temperature, you will find that at this point, the called TEP, the hot page temperature, you will find that the thermal radiation has lower Gibbs free energy volume. So there is a first order phase transition from, the, from this large black hole to the thermal radiation. And also you will find that if we, your temperature is below T1, there is no black hole solution, so you can only have radiation in, in this range. So this is a figure shows the whole page transition. And now let's talk about the triple points, the black hole triple points. And we all know water has triple points, where the three phases, the solid, liquid, and fast phases can coexist. And uh, so what about black holes? Can black holes also have triple points? And uh, in the black hole chemistry, the different phases of the black holes are distinguished by the size of the black hole. So you can have a small black hole phase, an intermediate black hole phase, and a large black hole phase. And a recent study showed that uh, the black hole triple points can be found in various types of black holes. 
including Martin Skinny, Kurt Adias Black Holes, Charlie Gosplay, Black Holes in Aliens, and Lavlock Black Holes. So these are the references for this. So uh, we already talked about the black hole triple points. And uh, also, as we know, in chemical system, the quadruple points may exist. For example, uh, in, uh, in this paper, show that uh, quadruple points were observed in polymers and colloids in the chemical lab. So the quadruple points are points where four phases can coexist. So this figure shows the quadruple points in this chemical system. So this is the point, the quadruple point, where the four phases can coexist. And uh, the same question, can we also have the black hole quadruple point? The answer is also yes. This paper, uh, the multi critical points in black hole phase transition, by Kabe Koloi and uh, Wu and uh, Dr. Man, they show that uh, we can also have multiple critical points in black hole phase transitions. We can have quadruple point, quintile point, and so on. So this is a picture taken from that paper. So this shows a quadruple point in the in the black hole uh, phase diagram. So this is a PT phase diagram. And you can say this is uh, a smallest black hole phase, this is small black hole phase, this is large black phase, this is largest black hole phase. And this single point is called the quadruple point where the four phases can coexist as this three diagram. So now let's talk about the quadruple points in black hole phase transitions. Uh, followed uh, by that paper, that paper uh, used a uh, setup for uh, where we consider an action of the four-dimensional Einstein gravity covering nonlinear electron dynamics. So this is the action we consider. So we have, uh, this is the turning of the metric. It's the first term is the Ricci scalar term, and the second term is the cosmological constant term. And this is the electron magnetic field term. So here, um, instead of just uh, have f squared term, we can also have f to the fourth, f to the sixth, and so on. So we have a uh, generalization of the Maxwell field here, where the f mu nu, where the f squared equals to f mu f mu nu, and f mu nu is the electromagnetic field tensor, and the alpha i here are the coupling constants in front of the electromagnetic field tensor, and uh, by varying this action, we can get the Einstein power uh, Maxwell equations. So this is the generalized law of the Einstein equation. This is Einstein tensor. This is the uh, electron field curve. And this is a uh, uh, generalized Maxwell equation. So uh, let's consider the following answers that describing a spherically symmetric static black hole. So this is the metric we are considered. So this is a vector potential, this is a, uh, this is a potential. So this, if we consider this metric answers, this will yield us the below field equations. And uh, if we want to solve the field equations, we will assume some serious expansion for the metric function u and uh, the potential phi. So we assume there are some series. And uh, the b's and the c's are series coefficient in front of the radius r. So after uh, plug this series into the field equations, so in order by order, we can get that. Uh, we can go get the solution for the c's and the b's. So this is the coefficient of c's, this is coefficient of b's, and they are determined by the mass m charge q and the coupling constants alpha. So uh, to to study the quadruple point, let's focus on a setting where the alpha are non-zero and independent for i is less or equal than seven. So in this case, we can have the below solutions for the phi and the, for the phi and the u. So phi is the potential and the u is the metric function. And uh, we can also check that if all the alpha i's for i is greater than one, I say to be zero, we can recover the charge the ADS black hole case, the simplest uh, one. So uh, after getting that solution, we can compute the thermodynamic quantities of that metric. So we can have the entropy, which is proportional to the area. We can also have the pressure, P, which is related to the ADS length scale. And also the complete variable of the pressure is the volume. And also we can compute the Hawking temperature, which is given by F pi uh, divided by 4 pi. And the equation of state, which is a relationship 
as we learned in the chemistry course, the ratio between the pressure and temperature. So uh, after uh, obtaining all that uh, thermodynamic quantities, we can compute uh, the deep square energy, which is given by the enthalpy minus the temperature times the entropy. So if we plot this deep square energy diagram for this case, uh, deep square energy diagram basic temperature, we can get uh, this figure. So there are four blue lines. So the four blue lines means that you have uh, four stable black hole solutions. This is the largest black hole, this is a large black hole, this is a small black hole, this is the smallest black hole, and there are also three red dash lines. They are un unstable phases. And uh, we can also say three swallow tails here, just like swallow tails. And uh, so we can also observe a uh, black hole phase transition if we, uh, for example, if we decrease the temperature. Here, if we decrease the temperature, uh, originally you have a largest black hole, but if you decrease the temperature, the large black hole will have lower Gibbs <coughs> energy. So there is a first order phase transition from the largest black hole to the large black hole. And also if you decrease the temperature, it will become a small black hole. And here, it will be a phase transition from a small black hole to the smallest black hole. And uh, if we uh, adjust uh, the parameters I mentioned before, adjust uh, the, uh, the pressure, the charge, and uh, the company constants are fast, or the fees, we can find that we can make the four blue straight lines intersect at one single point. So this point is called the quadruple point. So we make the small tails overlap and make the uh, four blue lines intersect at a single point. So this is the quadruple point. And uh, we can find that in this quadruple point, the four phases can coexist. So this is called the quadruple point. And also we can find that in this temperature range, all the four phases are committed. Any reason you choose those values? I'm oh, sorry? Any reason you choose those values? Uh, the reason to choose that is just to make the, the swallow tails overlap to observe the quadruple point. Otherwise, you will not get the quadruple point. No theoretical uh, Because we want to study the quadruple point. So this is how to get a quadruple point. You uh, change these parameters to to make uh, uh, these three soil tails move together. Okay, um, so in other quadruple point, we can uh, introduce another concept uh, to describe the dynamics of the black hole phase transitions. So this is called the generalized Higgs uh, energy, or the offshore Higgs energy. So the offshore Higgs energy is a continuous function of the horizon radius and the various ensemble temperatures. So instead of using Hawking temperature T here, we use some ensemble temperature called TE. This is the environment temperature that uh, is our input, our setting. So this is called the offshore Higgs energy. And uh, for the offshore Higgs energy, for example, if you choose the temperature that I mentioned before, the particular point of temperature, you will get this diagram. The offshore Higgs energy versus the horizon radius diagram. In this diagram, as you can see, uh, there are four local minimum, means the four stable black hole phases. This is the radius direction. So this is the smallest black hole. This corresponds to the small black hole. This is the large black hole, and this is the largest black hole. And we can also see that there are three local maximum, Rm1, Rm2, and Rm3. So that correspond to three unstable black hole phases. And all the other points on this curve are called some transiencies during the black hole phase transition processes. So uh, this is the figure that I mentioned before as the quadruple point temperature, as we know. All the, uh, all the four stable phases have the same Gibbs energy value. So there are no preferred state in this case because they have the same, lo uh, same low Gibbs energy value. But uh, you will also find that if you decrease the temperature, for example, at cold temperature, so the blue curve shows the offshore Gibbs energy versus the horizon radius at the cold temperature. And in this case, you will find that the smallest black hole has the lowest Gibbs energy value. So the smallest black hole is the failure state. And then the largest black hole here has the highest Gibbs energy value. So the largest black hole is not favored in this case. 
but if you increase your temperature, so in this case, in this case, uh, we have a red curve. This is the hot temperature case. In this case, the lattice black hole has the lowest density value. So the lattice black hole is favored. And uh, the smallest black hole has the highest density value. So the smallest black hole is not favored in this case. So uh, let's talk about the dynamic process at this <coughs> point. So this is a figure for the uh, quadruple point temperature. And um, the question is how to understand the dynamics of the black hole phase transitions. In this case, uh, we need the small neutropsy equation. The small neutropsy equation is just uh, the focal plant equation describing uh, diffusion processes under some given potential. So here we use the actual diffusion energy or the generalized diffusion energy as the potential in this case. So here GL is the generalized diffusion energy. So it plays the role of the potential. And uh, the role here is the probability density function, the probability for the black hole physics. And the uh, beta here is the inverse ensemble temperature. E is the diffusion coefficient. So if we want to solve that uh, small neutral equation numerically, we need uh, to impose some boundary conditions on initial conditions. So for initial conditions, we impose the, uh, we assume the initial state to be the Gaussian wave pocket picked on one of the four phases. So either you can have a Gaussian wave pocket picked at here, so maybe here is your initial state, or your initial state in here, or here, or here. So this is the initial condition. And for the boundary conditions, we set uh, the reflective boundary as the true size. So uh, no probability can be escape, can escape from this potential. So this is our reflective boundary conditions. And uh, by solving that uh, small the equation numerically, we can get these figures. These figures are the probability distribution evolution at the quadruple point temperature. For example, let's look at this. Uh, this, time, this direction is the time direction, and this direction is the radius direction, and uh, this z-axis is the probability, is the probability density. So in this figure, as we can see, uh, this means that our initial state to be a Gaussian wave pocket peak on the largest black hole. So our initial state is the largest black hole with horizon radius uh, like this. So uh, as we can see, initially the, uh, the probability for the largest black hole will decrease, and then the probability for the other three states will gradually increase. So this means that the probability for the largest black hole will gradually diffuse to the other three states. So this means that the black hole phase transition can indeed happen. So there is a phase transition from the largest black hole to a three other phases. And uh, we can also um, change the initial state. For example, you can change the initial state to be a large black hole. So uh, it's taken here initially. And uh, you can also change your initial state to be a small black hole or the smallest black hole. <coughs> so uh, this is the uh, this is just a 2D figure of that uh, of that probability evolution. So by seeing a 2D figure, I mean, I just uh, focus on the four stable phases. So you have, uh, for example, the, the purple curve means the largest black hole, and uh, the orange curve means the large black hole, and the red curve means the small black hole, and the blue curve means the smallest black hole. So for example, in this low temperature case, in this low temperature case, as we can see, the smallest black hole has the lowest density value, so the smallest black hole is favored state. So we can also observe this phenomenon in the evolution diagram. <coughs> so this is a time evolution direction. So as we can see, instead of uh, regardless of your initial state, either you are initial large, in a initial large, initial small, or initial smallest, you will find that after a sufficiently long time, this will become stationary, and uh, you will find that uh, for all of the cases. The smallest black hole, which is the blue curve, will win. So this means that uh, finally you will find that the smallest black hole has the highest uh, probability. So this is just the determiner by this offshore energy because the smallest black hole has the lowest distance value. So it must be the 
February state. And this is at the high temperature. So at the high temperature, the largest black hole has the lowest exponent value. So the largest black hole is favored. And uh, we can also say that regardless of the initial state, either initial largest, initial large, initial small, or initial smallest, you'll find finally the purple curve. The purple curve means largest black hole. So the purple curve will win. So if you uh, just uh, adjust your temperature, just uh, right at uh, the quadruple point temperature. So this is the uh, uh, official heat footage I show here. So in this case, if you just at this temperature, the quantum point temperature, the four phases will have the same heat footage value. So the four phases will share the pro share the same probability after a sufficiently long time. So this is the evolution diagram for that probability distribution. So as you can see, uh, also regardless of your initial state, the four phases will uh, will share the same probability. So all of the four curves will reach the same probability value. So now let's talk about the first passage time events. So the first passage time is used to understand the uh, the early behaviors of the black hole phase transitions. So the first the time for giving initial phase means uh, is defined as the required time to first <coughs> climb to the top of the nearby Gibbs energy barriers that correspond to the unstable phases. So for example, uh, the first passing time for the largest black hole is the time required to from this state to this state. So this is called the first passing time. And uh, if we want to construct the first passing time, we need to impose the observing boundary conditions here. So we, we need to let the probability across here that's reflected back to the initial state. So this is the first passing time distribution shown for these four phases. So this is the first passing time for, for the smallest black hole. This is the first passing time for the largest black hole. And these two are first passing time for these two because you can either uh, go to hit this top or this top. Or if you start from here, you can either go this top or this top. So you have uh, two terms in this in this two first passing time distribution. So this is the first passing time distribution for for the uh, quadruple point temperature. And this temperature you will find that uh, if your if your initial step is the largest black hole, you will find that your uh, your uh, first passing time has this figure. So, and uh, uh, we can also observe some common features for these four <coughs> diagrams. As you can see, the first passing time will shortly peak and then decay gradually. <coughs> so this means that the first passing time will occur at a very short time. So that is why the first passing time usually uh, be used uh, to explain the early time behaviors. So we use the, the, uh, the time correspond to the peak to explain, uh, to, uh, to explain the time scale for the phase transition. For example, if your, if your initial state is the largest black hole, uh, the time scale is around uh, 1,000. So it's a very long time compared to the other three triggers. So this means that if you start from here, you need a downtime. But uh, if you start here, if you just consider the smallest case, if your uh, if your initial state is the smallest black hole, you find that this time scale is very short. So this means that you just need a very short time to uh, to cross to cross this top here. So uh, this this table shows the uh, shows the first time pass time scale for this for this temperature, but you can also uh, you can also compute it for the low temperature or the high temperature. <coughs> and then we could also find that uh, the, uh, the, the, the time scale has this ordering, and it, it is also correspond to the time scale of the barriers. So it means that uh, if you have a, a larger size of the barrier, you need more time to across the top. So you need more time to, uh, to complete the phase transition processes. Okay, so this is the figure at the quadruple point. Uh, you will find that for the early time, 
you have the uh, the probability for the small black for the small black hole is bigger or almost equal to the small black hole and is bigger than the largest black hole. So this is the same for the uh, for the for the first part of time. So you can use the first part of time to explain the ordering at the early times. Okay, now let's make a conclusion. So in this talk, we found that the black hole multi-critical points that exist, and the black hole transitions can happen at these multi-critical points, and the, the equilibrium dynamics now being understood. Initially, the probabilities will lead to the other three uh, states from the initial state. This indicates the occurrence of the black hole phase transitions, and finally, the probability distribution will become stationary, and uh, the the stationary probability is determined by the offshore field energy. So that's all. Thank you. So any questions? Uh, I want to know uh, if is there any phenomenon that we can observe about the black hole phase transitions? Uh, you mean some uh, phenomena in our universe? Uh, I want. For example, if I want to observe mm -hmm. the black hole phase transition, and uh, what can I do? Okay. Um, unfortunately, there are no experiments uh, or laboratory to test the black hole phase transitions uh, in our real life. So, uh, if you do a thinking, if you do a thinking experiment, uh, you may you may compare it to some. Uh, ensemble picture, like you have a lot of black holes uh, get very far away from each other, and uh, for example, if you are, uh, if they are all large black holes, and uh, you if you can put them in a cavity that has the temperature I set, uh, for example, the quantum point temperature, you find that uh, the all the largest black holes will become like a uh, twenty five percent uh, smallest black hole, twenty five percent uh, small black hole. 25% uh, large black hole, 25% uh, large black hole. So uh, unfortunately, there is no experiment, uh, but uh, you can do some thing, thinking experiments about that. Yeah. Uh, is black hole phase transitions classical or quantum phenomenon? Uh, uh, in this in this frame, framework, we all consider it is a uh, probability. I mean, classical probability. So it's not a quantum probability. Uh, is there and uh, is, is there black hole phase transition in our universe? Uh, I think there may some black hole phase transitions. Yeah, but uh, I didn't have uh, evidence to to show that. So are the transitions first order or second order? Uh, first order. All first order. Yeah. Uh, I think um, it depends on when you depends on your metric and uh, the types of black holes. You 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 will first uh, draw your deep friend diagram with the temperature, and in this diagram you can you can tell whether it is first order or the second order. For example, in our deep friend diagram, you you will have some swallow tail like this. So in this case, it's uh, first order. Yeah, I think so. If I can comment, there are uh, examples where you take Einstein gravity and couple it to sca uh, scalars in certain ways, mm -hmm. and then you can have a line of second order phase transitions, which is a superfluid transition. Mm -hmm. But they're not common, right? But, but they do exist.
Uh, I think the, the reason why we are interested in quadruple points is that in chemical system, we can observe the quadruple points, like uh, even in a single component system. So if we want to consider our black hole as a chemical system, we think uh, it should have uh, quadruple points, not only triple points. So, and uh, also in uh, Rob's paper, they found uh, more higher order uh, points, like uh, quintuple points, where five phases can coexist. So you can have them. Sorry, Charlie.